Hello crafters! Today's project is collaboration with Therese from Lost in Paper. I always admire her unique artistic vision and talent. We have decided that each of us will create a card. The theme is water flowers. It will be fun to see how we end up creating different projects following the same topic. So here is my card. I have mostly focused on die cutting and layering. And this is how I made it. I have started with a piece of white cardstock slightly larger than the standard A2 format. Then I am going to use a second largest die from Rectangle Basics set by Memory Box to create a frame. If you are interested in the products that I am using, you can find the link to the supply list in the description. This is a piece of 2 mm thick craft foam. I am going to cut it into thin strips, about 1 8 of an inch wide. I am going to use those foam strips instead of mounting tape, because they are thicker and they are easier to cut than the sticky tape for me. So now I am using a quick drying tacky glue by Scotch to attach all those strips to my frame at the wrong side. I am sticking them close to the inner edge, not the outer one. Liquid glue also allows to readjust the pieces before it, the glue dries. Next I am going to use these two Whipping Willow dies by Poppy Stamps. I will be attaching the first one on top of the foam layer. Notice that I am working on the wrong side of the frame and I am positioning all the die cuts face down. I also like to use a large acrylic block. It allows me to press the die cut down and the pressure is evenly spread all around the area. It also minimizes the warping of cardstock as the glue dries. Then again I am applying a layer of foam and sticking the second willow die cut on top of it. This is Country Fence Oval Frame by Memory Box. I am going to use only the river banks for this project and to trim off all the rest. Now I can attach those river banks behind the tree trunks. Those die cuts are a bit short for my scene, so I am trimming off the excess now. And then I am going to kind of correct their outline. To do it, I am placing a piece of cardstock behind and drawing the outlines. Then I am going to cut this piece out and uh, stick it to the project. This part turned out to be tricky because this die was definitely not meant to be used like that, but I hope the result will be worth the effort. Now I am applying the glue again at the wrong side, and that is to stick this strip of vellum that is going to be the water. This super cute tiny die is called Little Bridge, it's also by Memory Box. I had to die cut it twice, and this is how I assemble it. I am using a needle applicator bottle filled with a Ranger Multimedia Mat, and I am also using Crystal Katana pickup tool for precision placement of my die cuts. 
these tools really make the work with the small pieces much, much easier. Then I can attach the bridge to the banks of my pond. And now to the water lilies. This tiny die set is lovely lily pads by Poppy Stamps. I'm going to color the flowers pink with the sponge sugar distress ink and leave all the other parts white. Again I'm using the needle applicator bottle and a pickup tool to position all the lilies and stick them to the vellum. This is my card base. It is the same size as, as the frame with a scene. I will be sticking a piece of ivory cardstock on top of it. It is a bit darker than the white cardstock I used for the scene, and this way it helps all the elements to stand out more. I am also adding a faint touch of pink in the center, and I try to blend it out really well. I am using the same ink that I colored the water lilies with. So now I am sticking the final layer of foam and adhering the whole frame to the card base. Then I will position the acrylic block on top, let everything dry completely and my project is finished. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I really had a lot of fun making this card. Now I'm really encouraging you to head over to Teresa's channel and see what water flower project she has created. Have a great day and I hope to see you again soon.